Hey Coda, so the time has finally come to go ahead and construct our full stack SaaS application using QuickJS and a bunch of other technologies. Now, what are we using Superbase for? Remember, it's gonna be used for our authentication. We're going to have a user sign up through our QuickJS application and when they do, it's gonna create a user in Superbase. When that happens, that will automatically create a trigger to create a record in a profiles table. That record will store any information we need to about that user. What role do they have? What should they be able to access, etc.? Whether or not they agree to terms and conditions, what is their Stripe customer ID, all of that kind of stuff. We're gonna store there in the profiles table. Superbase is also going to manage our authentication provider setup. So if you're using something like GitHub or Google, etc., it will manage that. It will also manage us having users sign in, sign up, etc., using email only. So you can use a password, you can use mobile phones as well if you want to. I like just using email only, no password required. And actually I think passwords are kind of redundant now, if I'm really honest. So that's what we're gonna be going and doing over there. So without any further ado, let's go in this video and just focus on Superbase and getting it set up. Now go ahead and create an account with Superbase. You'll see I've already got one created here and I've created a project as well. So when you sign up or sign into Superbase, create a project. I created an organization called Code Raiders and a project called Code Raiders within that. And so what we wanna do over here is go ahead and move into that project. So once you've created a project and you've waited a couple of minutes for everything to load, you will have this up here in front of you. Now, the first thing you wanna do is head over to this table editor over here. And you'll notice we're in the schema called public. If you drop this down, you'll also see there's a schema called auth and this has all your authentication tables, etc. So here you can see users, uh, you can't see passwords, etc., which you shouldn't be able to. You can see refresh tokens because Superbase is using JSON web tokens to manage authentication. We just care about this public table. So stay in here and select new table. Now we're gonna call this table profiles because this is going to store what role that user should have, what they should be able to access, etc. And let's enable row level security if it's not already checked for you, which it is here. Row level security is very important because it basically means that a user can't do anything from the browser unless you say what they can do. So you can set up some kind of policy that says, if you're making a request from the browser, it should only be able to say, edit something if the ID matches that authenticated user's ID. Like there's things you can do there where you can have the browser make requests and not have to go and overload your server, etc. So there's things you can do with that. We'll leave that checked. And here, what I wanna do is ID, I wanna go and link that to the, let's uh, find it here. Where is it? Auth users table. And I wanna link it to the UUID. So ID, unique user ID, hit save there. And you can see now this is linked to the users table. So if we go back over here to our diagram, we're now linking this table to this table here based on user ID. Um, so if you're familiar with foreign keys, then that might make some sense to you. But that's what we want to do. We want it so that that record, that ID directly matches the actual unique user ID as well. And here, let's go and add another column in here. Let's call this email, and that'll just be varchar. So we'll create a record that has the user's email in here as well. I know that's duplication, but if you wanna go and find a user email in a table quickly because you're a startup and you haven't built out a whole admin infrastructure yet, this can be really handy for you. So let's go and add that in. Let's also put in something like, uh, is terms agreed? So when they sign up, they should agree to the terms and conditions. And that should always be true, basically, but we're gonna put that in here anyway. And here I'm gonna say it's false right now. And let's also add a column here and call this role, right? So this will be a var char. Um, let's go variable character. Let's add that here, because that's essentially like text. Um, so this var char and text, if you're not familiar with, super, uh, with Superbase, I should say databases, var char is variable character, I believe. Text is like if you're gonna store like a blob of text in that field. Could be wrong, someone smarter than me will definitely uh, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong on that. So you have your email, you have your role, you have, you know, are your terms agreed, yes or no? What else do we want? We also wanna store in here maybe the Stripe customer 
ID. And you could choose to put that in a separate table, etc. if you wanted to, to handle like all Stripe stuff or PayPal stuff. I actually think it's very useful to have it here. So we'll do that. Um, we will also default the role to free so that when a user signs up, their role is automatically set as a free user. And the reason for that is, so for my other application, for example, that doesn't happen. A user only gets set as a status of they can access the dashboard, et cetera, if they've paid because I sell sensitive financial data and information that other people pay for, right? It's not fair on those other people if that user just signs up and accesses all of that. But for here, I want a free tier. I want a user to be able to sign up and do stuff without actually having to be a paid member. And the reason for that as well is I have no idea what Code Rages is gonna do. I have some ideas on things I wanna build that are going to save people time and money, but I haven't thought about monetization much yet. And we'll talk about that in another video. So that sounds good. Let's go here and hit save. And it says, ensure that all your columns are assigned a type. Oh, whoops, so Stripe customer ID. We have to also go and assign that something. And here I'm gonna use Varchar for that as well. So that was very helpful. Thank you, Superbase. That saved me headaches, wondering why it wouldn't work. And that's gonna go and create six columns for us now in a profiles table. And here you can see them. We have ID, created at role, is terms agreed, email, Stripe customer ID. It's all here, everything we want. Now let's move down here to database because one of the things we want to happen with Superbase is when someone signs up, so they're here on their sign up page and they click the button sign up, you know, it'll run some checks. Did they agree the terms? Da, 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 da. And then it'll go and say, okay, cool. Superbase, go and create a user. Superbase creates that user. What we need is a trigger to go and create a record in the profiles table for that user, right? So that's what is going to happen over here. We're going to set up a trigger that needs to go and run a function. So here's our functions, here's our triggers. So we need to create the function first that will go and create something there for that user. So what do we need to do? We need to go ahead and start with the functions here and click on create a new function. And here we'll say create user profile function. And leave this as public. The return type is going to be a trigger. So put this as public trigger. Okay, for definition, this is the actual function part, right? So what you wanna do is just go and type out this code that I'm gonna copy and paste here. It's very small, it just says begin, insert into public.profiles, the ID and the email with the values new.id, new.email. So it's basically saying when a user is created, take that new ID and email and pop it into the public profiles table that we created, return new and end. And remember to put your semicolons, etc., in the right places here as well, or it won't work. Now this next part caused me so many headaches because I kept forgetting to do it in the past. And I was wondering why this isn't working. It's not working, oh, it's so painful. Go over here and click show advanced settings. When you do that, scroll down. And here where it says security, don't use security for invoker, use security for definer. What that means is you need to say that Superbase basically has the authority and the security to go over when this function is run and create a record, right? So that's what we need to go and do over here and hit confirm. So make sure you do that last step, very important. Once you've confirmed that, we can go and set up our trigger. So here we have our function for create user profile. Now we need a trigger. So let's go and set that up. And we're going to say name of trigger is going to be create user profile trigger. And the reason I call one function one trigger is so that if I'm reading it, I know what tab I'm on. It's just to help me. So this is where it gets interesting. It says, okay, let's find the table that we want to cause the trigger, right? It's our users from our auth schema. And so we have this users table. Anytime there's a record inserted into that table, that's when we want to fire off the trigger. So if we go back here, we're saying anytime a user is created here, we want to go and insert or inserted here, I should say, we want to go and fire off the trigger that runs a function to create this um, or create a record in the profiles table, I should say. We want that to happen after the row was inserted in users and statement change to row fires once for each process, processed row. 
And then it says, okay, well, what function do you want to run? So you can just go and choose that. And here we have our create user profile function. So go and hit confirm there. Amazing. Okay, so if all of that went smoothly, which we'll test out in the next video when we go to the sign up and we start doing that in QuickJS, you'll see it all working there and then. Well, we might come back to webhooks later. I'm thinking basically of using webhooks to have our Stripe customer ID created. I'm not going to go working through that now because it involves using ngrok and all sorts of other things. I don't want to actually go and do that right now. We might do that later on. Now, in terms of policies, if I go over here and look at the profiles table, I can create a policy that says, um, click on get started quickly. Let's say for authenticated users only. So I'm going to use that as a template. I want them to be able to update, not insert. I want them to update or select records, for example, from there. Let's, let's put update here. That's absolutely fine. And I'm going to say basically that the unique user ID or the UID needs to be equal to the ID that they make that request from. They also need to be authenticated and that popped up automatically. So here this will be, you know, enable um, let's say update access for user that is authenticated. I'm actually going to delete this in a moment because I don't want users being able to update a table from the client side. That means they could just give themselves access to something, for example. But if I go and hit review there and save policy, it'll basically go and make sure that if a user is in the client, in the browser, and they make a request, that that request is permitted if them being logged in and authenticated enables them to access that row of data they're trying to access, i.e. the one that has their ID on it. Now, in terms of providers, this gets a bit fun here. This is where you can set up some cool stuff. For example, we already have email defaulted. Here you can also use phones uh, and use a provider like Twilio or something like that if you want to. I'm not going to do that. I like to use GitHub and Google. So here you can go and say GitHub enabled and then go over to GitHub. In fact, I'll do that for you now. Go over to your GitHub settings, go down to developer settings and select OAuth apps, register a new application. So here I'm going to call this code Raiders homepage URL. So this would be the full URL to your application homepage. So I'll just put HTTPS because this is what it'll be code Raiders.com. Um, if you want to put that in there, you can. Now, if you go back over to Superbase, you'll see that it gives you this redirect URL here under GitHub. Just copy that, move over here, paste that in over there and say register application. And then you can also for this application, you can give it uh, an image, etc., So you know what's going on over there, but copy this client ID, paste that in here, go back over here, generate a new client secret right copy that secret and paste that in over here as well now i'm going to change these obviously because this video is up here on youtube but that's basically all you need to do and hit save that means that you can now use github to do authentication when building your application so once you have github set up you'll be able to go and access logging in through github using superbase now, Google, you can do the same thing, but you have to go through the Google Web Console to do it. We'll do a separate video on that because that can be quite involved to go and get set up. If this isn't working for you, which I'll show you how to do it in the tutorials later on, but if you're impatient and you want to start it now and it's not working for you, I found GitHub, Google, etc. usually work fine as long as you're using SSL, so HTTPS. If you're not using HTTPS, it probably won't work for you. So we've got Superbase set up now. And until the next one, remember to just shut up and code.